Okay, here's our next segment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to set this up. So, there is a HB 3653 in the Illinois Senate. In the Illinois House and Senate. Passed. Governor Pritzker just signed it. I think last week. Finally signed it. What it does is it removes the mandate in state law through the police officer's Bill of Rights that complaints against officers that a citizen files or a fellow officer mandate, it removes the mandate that those be accompanied by a affidavit, a signed affidavit that can have you prosecuted for perjury if you lie materially in, in that. So when we saw that, it was like, oh, great. We're going to get rid of the affidavit in Chicago requirement. No. And I will tell you that for years this was brought up in the Chicago Coalition for Police Accountability and people have been talking about getting rid of it and some organizations, which I won't mention because I don't have who exactly said it when, were talking about, well, it's both in state law and the union contract, so they're not going to push the city to get rid of the union contract because it's also in state law because the useless, moronic, Mayor Daley, Rahm Emanuel, and now Lori Lightfoot, because I'll get to in a minute, let, put that in the union contract also, because it was in state law, so they just incorporated it into the union contract. That was a mistake. So the propaganda around not meeting a signed affidavit by state law, well, guess what? You have to change it in the union contract in Chicago, too, with the Fraternal Order of Police, or it won't make a difference. You got to get it from two places. You got to get it out of two places. And since the activists, including me, did not get it out of the union contract years ago, it should have been. We should have pursued that. Now we got it out of state law, but it doesn't make a difference because guess what? It's still in the union contract. Now, the mayor and the city are, are negotiating that with the FOP currently. The video we're going to watch is from John Cotanzara, the FOP chairman, Fraternal Order of Police Chairman, the largest union in Chicago. Now, before you, um, I shouldn't say before, after you see the show, go to our website at chicagojustice.org and you will see uh, home screen, lower right. Just right in the home screen. You don't have to scroll anywhere. Lower right is the link to our report we released to, from uh, uh, 23 years of his history of misconduct and his grotesque social media plugs. Go read that about this guy so you have a little more context of who the mayor is forced to negotiate with. But let's see, did the mayor, who now has the power and has been in office two years and has been negotiating pretty much the entire time, has she gone after and removed the affidavit rule from the union contract so now people can file anonymous complaints against officers that get full investigations? So let me explain one thing. If you file previous to HB 3653, and it also being in the union contract, you could file an anonymous, anonymous complaint against an officer, and at that time, Office of Professional Standards would investigate the whole thoroughly. Now, and that's without an affidavit, now, or since the Bill of Rights and, and, and IPRA was created, the Independent Police Review Authority, in around the 2007, what was required is you have to sign an affidavit to submit the complaint. If you don't, depending on the investigative agency, could be either at that point the Independent Police Review Authority or Internal Affairs. Either one could investigate it depending on what the content of the complaint was. Both of those agencies, or whichever agency was investigating it, could... Um, what's the best way to say it? They could do a cursory investigation. So like, oh, you know this happened in an intersection, let's go see if there's video. Right? Red light camera or some other kind of camera that could, right? Pod camera there. Or it happened in a business. Maybe they have a security cam and we can go pull footage. All right, no, they, there was a security cam. We got it. It verifies it. If they get it and it verifies it, then they can apply for an override. The head of IPRA would apply to the override. The head of internal affairs. The head of internal affairs would apply to the override to IPRA. Like, hey, we think we have enough to override the affidavit function. Can we do a full investigation? Without that override, they, can, they can't do the full investigation without the affidavit. Now, go back to one of our shows with Deborah Witzberg, the Deputy Inspector General for Public Safety. We, um, we did a show. They've done a report on this. The 
the override function was almost never used by the Independent Police Review Authority or COPA or Internal Affairs. They hardly almost never used it, right, during that time. So with this context, we have the head of the Fraternal Order Police, John Cottonzar, talking about his negotiations. And they supposedly, the FOP in the city, just recently reached an agreement. It's not formal yet, but they reached a, an agreement to an agreement, I guess, um, on economic issues, back pay, stuff like that. Here is um, John Cotanzara from the Friday Updates. He posts on YouTube every day on the FOP's YouTube channel. Talking about that, it runs about just under five minutes. Then we'll come back and talk about what Lightfoot did or didn't do. See for yourself. The second part is when it comes to anonymous complaints. The anonymous complaints are part of 3563. They got that done in Springfield. Um, we're going to still try and work on it, but the way the anonymous complaint component, and we, we were trying to get it to where it's a confidential complaint, semantics, different wording, but in reality, at some point, we wanted the person making the complaint to be revealed to the officer, same as any criminal court. Where we're at with it is this. If an anonymous complaint comes in and COPA does an affidavit override, which they have the authority to do. So, I mean, it, the, the anonymous complaint is almost a reality in today's world. Sad but true. So we tried to layer as many levels of protection as we could. What happens when a complaint comes in, the affidavit override kicks in. It's a log number. Once they determined that there is going to be an investigation prior to it going from a log number to a CR number. The officer will have the ability to file a grievance, request arbitration. An arbitrator will decide if there was enough evidence uh, for them to do an affidavit override. The arbitrator could say they didn't meet the burden, it's tossed out, the log number is erased, never on your record. If the arbitrator says there was enough there, then it turns into a CR investigation, goes from there. You still have your discipline protections and the grievance arbitration procedure to fight the findings or the discipline recommendation at a second, it's not a second bite at the apple, it's just two different dynamics, but that's the best protection we can come up with. Um, it's even a little different and stronger than I think what the sergeants have right now. Those are some of the simple components of what we're looking at. There's no sense going into a deep dive right now until we get a yes or no from the mayor's office. Uh, like I said, hopefully Monday, we shall see. On a more important note, uh, or more urgent note, City Council will be having a public safety meeting 5 p.m. on Tuesday prior to their general City Council meeting on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. They are taking up the subject matter of more accountability. <laughs> God only knows why. The police board was given broad powers about uh, suggesting police policies years ago. They've never done it. Um, but as when it comes to police policy, the police board has had the ability to do that. They want to create a whole other entity, and this is a big struggle. And here's one of the strange, unique times where we're on the same page with the mayor. The ability to construct department policy and procedures should be at the mayor's desk. Period. It should not be a civilian oversight dictating how men and women are going to operate in the police department. But that's what they want to do. Uh, we have to absolutely have our voices heard. It's incumbent upon all of you to reach out to your aldermen, your friends, your family. Blow up their phones. Visit their ward offices. Let them know there is already too much oversight when it comes to the police department. They need oversight more than we do a hundred times over. But that being said, we have to make sure that Bill gets killed where it's at in the Public Safety Committee on Tuesday night. If that becomes a reality, it is only going to make this job harder. These aldermen who are pushing this agenda, they have no idea what they're doing. They are just so blind to the future and what this city will become. Um, I've said it several times. The police department has four levels of oversight already. That's more than twice. <laughs> Nobody has more than two layers. We have four. They're thinking about adding a fifth now. It's just lunacy. But 
you really need to be on top of your game and let the alderman know everywhere across this city. It cannot happen. You can call you know, Alderman Taliaferro, even if he's not in your ward. He's the, he's the chairman of public safety. Give him a call. Um, let him know what you think. And if you could even make the city council meeting uh, on Wednesday morning, even better. Or the public safety meeting at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. You can still attend in person. It's limited seating, but you have the ability to be heard. There will be a public speaking comment section. Uh, as you know, I've made many trips there myself. Uh, I probably plan on p attending actually Tuesday night myself. But with that being said, Wow, I killed closed. All right, so you hear you hear him, right? So what did Lightfoot, Lightfoot do? Basically nothing. So let me explain. When the complaint comes in, instead of becoming a full CR, which is a full full blown internal investigation, or investigation by the police accountability system. If it gets a log number, which isn't directly tied to you yet. And then if they do a cursory investigation and then seek an override, then it becomes a CR. Complaint registry is what that stands for. It becomes a full-blown investigation. Um, that's basically what we had. What are you talking about? So what did Lightfoot get? Nothing. You know, I keep seeing on Twitter, and I keep getting uh, DMs, she's a cop. She's nothing but a cop. I got to tell you, there's not a whole lot of change. For someone who headed up the Police Accountability Task Force and all the rhetoric you heard from her about the, the task force and all of that, God darn it, she has been useless. Um, she did nothing here that Ron would have done that Daly wouldn't have done and got nothing and gave the cops everything. Eight-year contract, wonderful, so we don't have to go through this for another three or four years or something like that. But, because they're like three or four years late. What other than that did you get, Mayor? What did you get? She got nothing. She gave the store away. And I'm going to try to bring on a lawyer to talk about whether or not they could have in that state bill, HB 3653 or whatever, you know, was a, that was a package of bills omnibus bill and well, they could have in state law just made it that you could not mandate it in union contracts <laughs> it's frustrating we got nothing at least that's what it seems um i don't think anything has changed so sad